Welcome to our lecture online. So what do we do when we have a position vector that looks like that? How do we find the velocity vector and the acceleration vector? Well, it comes down to taking the derivative with respect to time of each of the components. Again, this can be extrapolated to three dimensions. So let's go ahead and do that. So that means that the velocity vector as a function of time is going to be equal to the derivative of this. So we get 2 times the derivative of the natural log of 4t, that would be 1 over 4t, times the derivative of 4t, that would be times 4, in the i direction. I guess we'll have to clean that up, plus 5 times 3, which is 15t squared in the j direction. So let's simplify this a little bit. The force cancel, the force cancel out, so we have velocity as a function of time, is therefore 2 over t in the i direction, plus 15t squared in the j direction. And since we're going to have to take the derivative again to find the acceleration vector, we can write this as follows. The velocity vector as a function of time is equal to 2t to the minus 1 in the i direction, plus 15t squared in the j direction. So this is probably a good form of the velocity vector, but now we need to take the derivative again. And this here should be an i. There we go. All right, let's do that. Let's take the derivative. So the acceleration as a function of time is equal to, uh, that would be minus 2t to the minus 2 in the i direction plus 30t in the j direction. So simplifying that, we get the acceleration as a function of time is minus 2 over t squared in the i direction plus 30t in the j direction. So you can see that simply by using the derivatives, we can convert a position vector to a velocity vector to an acceleration vector. But now, of course, how do we use these vectors and how do we apply that to getting the equation of lines? Well, that will come in the next videos. So stay tuned.